Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to share you with your family. Thank you so much. I, I want to pray right now for um, Tom and Carolyn Horner. Pray for Sam. Pray for all of those that aren't feeling well and are out. Father, you are so awesome. Thank you for allowing us to, for giving us the ability to just cast our cares upon you. And we know you hear us and we know you act. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So imagine up there, if you will, it's saying back to the basics versus change part two. Okay? I'm just a continuation of what I talk, we talked about last week. Um, we're going to discuss, remember this in that serenity prayer we talked about, that Jesus, how he took this sin sick world? That's what we're going to talk about this week, is how did Jesus deal with this sin sick world? And how it, this sin sick world, may actually change us. It might actually change us. But first, let's review a little bit. God does not change. Amen? Okay. But we are all going to change. Amen? Okay, we're good. We're cool. Just want to make sure that we're still on that same page. That no matter what, God does not change. We change. Okay? We just saw it in, in our communion time. God's plan doesn't change. He gave Daniel the same message. He gave John, and we'll read more about Daniel and about his prophecies in Revelation. But his plan from, if you would call it the beginning of time to today, hasn't changed a bit. We change. It's odd, isn't it? Hmm. So, we're going to go back over some things that's in that serenity prayer, and I want to point it to the scripture and kind of help maybe lighten the load on a few things. Okay? And we're going to concentrate on the third, fourth, and fifth stanzas of that prayer that they are okay, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace. I know, really? <laughs> Who really wants to accept hardship as a pathway of peace? What is what, what's the saying? What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I should be ten foot tall and bulletproof. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and well, when I was younger, I was. <laughs> How about this one? Taking as he did this sinful world as it is. Not as I would have it. Taking the sinful world as it is, how did he take it? Right? Did he actually say, you guys got to stop do doing what you're doing and change and do it in a different way? You can't be... He did, but he did it in a total subtle way. He, he taught them out of Scripture. What did God say how to live? Right? He didn't say, except for the money changers in the, in the temple. But he just taught. And what did Paul do in his ministry? He went about reasoning with the people. Reasoning with them. I think we have a hard time in this day and age, 2019, reasoning with one another. Don't we? It's my way or the highway, right? If you don't like it the way I do it, go and build your own church. And they do they do. Signs popping up everywhere, right? And I, I don't fault somebody from for saying, you know what, this isn't working, I've got to try, I'm going to try. Okay. Alright. But can't we reason with one another anymore? Can't we take the scriptures and agree and move forward? And usually it's not about scripture. It's about carpet or something. We can't reason about things anymore. Anyway, I'm, I'm starting to lose my piece on that. <laughs> and then the, the, the fifth one I want to talk about is trusting that he will make all things right if I sur surrender to his will. There's that surrender part, obedient part, <laughs> submission part that we have such a hard time with. We do. So let's do it. Let's break it down. Let's start off with going back to living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. 
Matthew 6.34. Matthew 6.34. You want to keep up? You can, but I'll just read it to you. Matthew 6.34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. This is written in red. This is the words of Jesus Christ. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Amen? Amen. How many times do we sit and we, you know, <laughs> just thought of this. <laughs> we sit and we fret about what's going to happen tomorrow. Right? We worry and we stew. <laughs> I guess there is one benefit about it. We forget about our troubles today. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like when I was a kid. You know, I I, I hurt my arm. Right? My dad would kick me in the shit. Bam! I'm like, what'd you do that for? My arm doesn't hurt anymore, does it? <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> but if we worry about tomorrow, I guess we quit worrying about today. <laughs> that's not that's not the way it works. We just double and compound and stew and fret. You ever stewed worry? It doesn't taste good. It's bitter. It's bitter. It doesn't catch anything. John 16.33 I have told you these things so that you, so that in me you may have peace. Words of Jesus again. In this world you will have trouble. Why do we concern ourselves with trouble? He's telling us it's going to happen, right? He said, but he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. I have overcome the world. So we stew when we trouble and we fret and we worry. Is that trust? Is that faith? Is that, okay, Lord, I give it to you. But by the way, Lord, I, I, I can't make my bills. But I go in for surgery. My this, my that, my this. <clears throat> he understands it. 2,000 years ago when he told the apostles this, he understood your issues. He understood that you were going to have problems. What's he telling us? I put your trust and faith in me. Don't worry about tomorrow. Although I know you're going to, paraphrasing. Don't worry about it. Let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Most of us would rather to only hear the feel-good stories. Don't you? Don't you want to, you know, turn on TLC? You know, she always gets the cute guy in the end of the movie and you know, all Christmas is saved and all those good things. Right? How would I know that, man? That's what we're talking about, TLC. Oh, oh, sorry. TLC is where they rebuild TLC the house. TLC is steel. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> Slow down. I'm trying to stop. It's not on history. I don't know. <laughs> but most of us would rather have the feel good stories, happy endings, stories that warm our spirits and our hearts. Leave us believing that there's good in the hearts of men. You like that, right? But we know better. We know better. We know that life can get hard for us. And for some, a whole lot harder. A whole lot harder. And it's odd. Don't we take kind of solace in the fact that I don't have it as bad as this person? You ever done that? I know I have. You know, I'm thinking I'm having a bad day. Then I drive down the road and I go, you know, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm good. You know, I, why am I so worried about what I've got to do tomorrow when this person I know doesn't have a, an idea of what they're going to do this afternoon? Yeah. I have no idea. They have no idea what their, what their next meal is, right? Mm -hmm. I only thing I'm worried about, what's Amanda going to fix for dinner? Not if. Not if. Not if. What? And then I walk in and go, oh, that again? <laughs> we just ate three course meals every day. Right? Oh, gravy again. Mm. But I worry nice too. I don't want to. Mm. Despite, <laughs> you know, despite the prosperity gospel that's going around in churches nowadays. 
If you're an American who believe as God is just waiting to shower you with, benefit, with financial blessing, material wealth, the Bible tells us otherwise. The Bible tells us otherwise. Has all of these things happened to people in the Bible before? Absolutely. Look at Job. He was rewarded tenfold over what he had at the beginning of this, the book. Well, what did the man have to go through to get there? What did he have to go through? Makes the things that I have to worry about seem pretty small, pretty insignificant. And you see story after stories of people that have nothing but each other. They have nothing but love. And they have all things. They have great wealth because they have love. And they have acceptance. And that's all they care about. That's all they care about. We measure, our yardstick is a little bit different than in other countries, right? We measure things. I think your yardstick is a little shorter, a lot more meaningful, a lot more impactful. They have so much less to worry about that that turns into the blessing itself. We're so smart. We have all these things to worry about. I can't get service. They don't even know what service is. Hmm. You know that that prosperity gospel that's being kind of being really you know, been going on for quite a while. It's a trap. It can be a trap. Only thing that God promises you is what you need. That's all He's asking. That's all He's giving you. Prosperity measured by Him is your life. You have Jesus. You have a way to glory. Right? I've taken care of your basic needs. What else you want? What else is there? Oh, your health. Oh, right. Hmm. That health thing. Right? When you're in the hospital and you're being served by people and the blessing that goes out from that, you don't know it. Maybe, just maybe, the way I look, like to look at things is that one nurse that saw you, you and your friends praying, that one nurse that maybe doesn't understand or doesn't really want, want to believe, but she sees that, that seed is planted. You never know where your faith, your trust, where that seed will bloom. You leave that to God, right? You live every day as God would have you. Let him take care of the rest. It's really what we're saying. Let's keep going on this, breaking it down. Taking as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. And I've talked about this before, and I've said it before about, I want my burger done before I get to the drive-up window. I want it this way, I want it that way, and by golly, that Diet Coke better be cold. And full, and not too much ice. I'm just going to throw a fit. Right, Don? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not done with them, Don. I, I mess with her over a lot of But we want what we want, when we want, how we want it. And I want this sin sick world to do the things I want it to do. <coughs> Darn it. I want heroin to go away. Is it? That's not up to me. But what can I do for those that are addicted to it? What can I do for the children of those that are addicted to it? There's where, there's where we can maybe point our efforts and our, our resources, right? Those that can't help it. <clears throat> Interesting thought. You know, it's a very old question. Why is this world as bad as it is? Why does all these bad things happen? When we look at the world and we recognize that a holy and infinite, perfect God created it, why is it so bad? We can appreciate His majesty and His wonder, but why is it so bad? Hmm. But it's impossible for us to ignore the fact that this world is far from perfect. Hmm. There's sin in it. God allowed sin to enter in the Garden of Eden. 
and really mess things up. Really mess it up. Why then, if God is infinitely perfect and powerful, I'm not doubting God, why did he create a world to allow the fall to occur and to contaminate it? That's the question that's been asked for centuries. It was perfect. Why did he allow Satan to do that? Hmm. Okay, I got it. I got to find out what. I mean, well, that's a part of the tactic. Oh, stop. Did you read this? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go through my notes earlier. <laughs> Tuesday night, Bible said. Somebody has actually been listening. They agree. <laughs> no, we can conclude. Yes. <laughs> that God may very well have made a universe in which he allowed sin to exist. I had to write this down because I couldn't, I'm sure I couldn't remember it. God allowed sin to exist so that he himself could show the greatness and most perfect act of love by laying down his life for his friends. Laying down his life for his friends, for you. If this world would have been left perfect, <coughs> the sacrifice would have been needed. If this life would have been made perfect, what free will would have taken place? What is God trying to do? He's trying to refine for himself, perfect for himself, call for himself a group of people that love him and will be obedient to him and that will live for eternity with him. That's what it's about. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for those that perfect bride. But he knows we're not perfect. <clears throat> but he's making us perfect. And it's that condition of the heart that we open ourselves up to allow him to make us perfect. It starts with that big word we don't like. Obedience and attitude. What is our attitude toward him, toward his message, toward his son, toward his spirit? And are we obedient to his son, to his message, and to his spirit? If you say, I am, you got to talk. You're not always. None of us are. For, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. They've only made one. God only made one perfect one, and they killed him. Amen. If we remember that, that this life is a struggle, this life is, is riddled with thorns and bugs and arrows, flaming arrows from the evil one, all of those things, we understand that. Then when we, the, the trouble comes, we can go, yeah, I knew you were coming. You know, you can hear maybe some Western theme song in the background, you know. I was ready for you. It's not you. Satan? God told me you were going. Draw. <laughs> Little ballad of Buster Scruggs. <laughs> just do me a favor. After you, you gun him down, don't go to the bar. All right, just sing it. <laughs> John Wayne did, but you know, that was different. That was different. What are you going to gun, gun Satan down with? There you go, the armor of God. You're going to deflect his flaming arrows with the armor of God, and you are going to be shooting back with L-O-V-E, love. Can you keep burning coals on Satan's head by loving those that he's trying to destroy? Absolutely. Let me read First John. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. There's a period there. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So it's not power. It's not understanding. It's not that deep, dark theological understanding that gets it. It's love. Period. It's what it says. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. Judgment in this world, we are like Jesus. We are not Jesus. We are like him. We are made perfect in him. And it's not anything that you do as in, okay, if I build enough tiny houses, or if I do this, if I do that, I'll be finally made perfect enough to get into heaven. No. No. 
your works are to be considered filthy rags. But without works, your faith is empty. He can't, your faith isn't evident by sitting in your closet. Your faith is made evident by the things that you do in love. In love. You might build a thousand tiny homeless houses, but you're doing it in love. Not, look what I have done. Excuse me, I stepped on my cake. Oh. You're saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, I do this. In the name of Jesus Christ, Cascade Christian <coughs> Church, host Narcotics Anonymous. In the name of Jesus Christ, we allow the Gr Girl Scouts to come in, hopefully that they will understand that this is just a building filled with people just like them. And someday, when they start having little children, they'll go, you know, I think I'd like them to maybe try. We don't know where that seed goes. Right? But in the name of love, in the name of Jesus Christ, we serve one another. We edify and build up the body of Christ. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we have sermons. That's why we, we feed it for people that need it. To build you up in love. But it makes us feel good. It really does. Isn't it a good feeling to love someone and take care of someone? We feel good when that happens. Ah, so does God. So does God. He loves to love you. You pray in the Spirit and your prayers flow up to Him like an aroma, like a sweet aroma. He goes, they love me. I'm going to love them. I'm going, they have returned to me. I'm returning to them. This is all Scripture. It's all Scripture. But we want everything to be our way, including this sin sick world. Or she doesn't look right that way, does it? So let's continue. The last one. Wait a minute. Yeah, the last one. <laughs> Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. If I surrender to his will. Oh, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go. It's raining. I know. <laughs> Some of you are going, okay, may I have said that? I only preach it myself. Psalms. 910. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who have seen you. We're not talking about seeing you. We're talking about seeing you, seeing your miracles, seeing the evidence of your works. Have you ever seen a baby before? Oh, it's a miracle. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Whoever has seen the Seattle Seahawks. Get, just kidding. Just kidding. <coughs> Y'all look like you're getting a little heavy out there. John 14, 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled, but trust in God. Trust also in me. Words written in red. In Jesus Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled, but trust in God. Trust also in me. You know, in some translations of the Bible, where it says trust, it, it's believe. It's believe. They're synonymous. In this, in this text, trust and believe are synonymous. It's the same word in the Greek. It can be used either way. So I'm going to read it again. Do not let your hearts be troubled, but believe in God. Believe in God. Believe in Christ also. So what are you saying? How do you become saved? Who, uh, whomsoever believeth in me shall see everlasting life. Yeah, it's belief. There's no act to that. It's right here. It's right here. You don't have to build a monument. You don't have to build shelters. You don't have to feed anybody. You feel it. It's right here. You know what the, the sad thing is? You come and hear a sermon or you hear something, you see some great sunrise or sunset, and you feel something. And then the world goes, nah, no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, no, that ain't real. That sunset's been happening for thousands of years. Why? 
Well, it's the same artist. <laughs> it's that artist that they don't believe in. Painting that beautiful picture for you day after day after day. Okay, in the Northwest, sometimes all the color uses is gray, but it's still beautiful. Right? Huh? It's red tonight. It's going to be red tonight? Awesome. Awesome. We won't be. We, we got to stay. We can't leave. <laughs> That's right. It's the. It's, who all have been kind of feeling weird lately? It's a full moon. Man and I were, you know, at Jungle Plain Land, and we, I looked up and went, well, duh, it's a full moon. You know, yeah, it's not scriptural, but I tell you what, if you don't believe in it, because it's real, it's real. that gravitational pull, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Whew, my fingernails were getting long yesterday, weren't they, man? Like, the teenagers. That's what Corey's problem yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> I can see <laughs> When he's about 18, you tell him that story and said it, just tell him it was because it was a full moon. I will. <laughs> oh, dear. Hold oh. on. <laughs> Anyway, Romans chapter 10, verse 11 to 13. Okay, I'm, I'm going to break this down a little bit. Scripture says, anyone who believes, trusts, in him will never be put to shame. Never be put to shame. But you know, it's the world that says you're going to be ashamed. And you know, you can't believe that. You don't get to have any fun. You, what do you mean you get up on a Sunday morning and go to church? Really? There's so many other things to be doing, right? You feel kind of ashamed. Okay. Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew or Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. It doesn't say not embarrassed. It doesn't say not shame. It doesn't say you're going to be the most popular kid in town or anything like that. It says saved, and that saved is on the last day when the trumpet sounds, when there will be no more death, no more dying. But there will be judgment. You, if you believe in him, if you are calling on his name, when that happens, you will be saved. saved. That's exactly it. All right. I already did. Oh, you already did. Okay. So there's some key words I want to share with you today. I want to, I want you to take with you, right? <laughs> key words: accepting hardship. I want you to walk out of here accepting hardship. Yeah, it's not gonna bother me. Yeah, I know that's not gonna happen. But think about it. Man. Think about it. Also, taking as he did. Okay, taking as he did. Tie the two together. Accepting hardship, taking it as he did, you will not have to do it the way he did. And I'm not going to, okay, we'll get back up. Is it possible that a gang may grab you, tie you to a stump, and beat, beat you to a pulp, and nail you to a cross until you are dead? Yes, it's possible. Bad things happen to good people. But what I'm trying to say is you will not have to take on the wrath the sin of the world upon you from the Heavenly Father. Jesus already did it. Amen? Amen. Jesus already did it. Trusting, believing, trusting and believing. Think about those this week. Okay? As you are going in your job, your dealings with your, your family, you're praying alone in that closet. Are you trusting and believing in Him? Are you giving Him? your faith. Another one, surrendering. Surrendering. Tie those two together. I believe in you, I trust <coughs> you, and I surrender myself to your leading. I surrender myself, I put myself where we've been baptized. You put yourself to death and raise a new creation in him. I surrender all. Do we sing it out there? Okay. 
calling on his name, calling on his name. When you are doing something, call on his name first, right? I don't care if you buy a car. Pray about it. Call on him. Get his, get his take on it. You know, he wants that relationship, that open discussion. Lord, what do you think? What do you think? You're making a movement. You're doing something. You're calling on his name. You're looking for his counsel. If your eyes are open, if your heart is open, you just may be amazed when somebody walks up and you go, man, I got this car I'm trying to sell you. Yeah. What's the Tim Taylor thing? <clears throat> How many <clears throat> moments have y'all had? I've had a lot of them, uh, right? Really? Uh -huh. You just kind of look away from the person you Thanks, Lord. Yeah. Last word I will leave you with. Love. 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 Love my neighbor as myself. Right? How would you want your you to be treated? I hated that when I was a kid, right? Treat other people the way you want to be treated. They call that the golden rule. But how? Not my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> this is an honest man right here. You know? Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Some of you didn't hear that. He said, "Y'all ain't got my neighbor's neighbor." <laughs> <laughs> I guess you got more work. <laughs> Praying for that neighbor. <laughs> Maybe a fence. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> Praying for a fence. <laughs> Love. Love your neighbor. Treat everyone how you want to be treated. That sucks. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta be all perfectly honest with you, right? Somebody makes you mad. You go, hmm. Then you then then you're gonna turn that around, you know, and go, I don't want people growling. All right. Right. You won't get snippy with your wife. Notice I didn't say husband, it's okay. <laughs> How did Jesus take this world? He laid down his life for it. He did his father's will. He became the sacrificial lamb on behalf of the entire world for those that would trust and believe in him. He surrendered. Now let me back and read that again. We are to be surrendering to his leading and to his example, calling on his name for salvation. I'm going to read an oldie but a goodie. Which I guess they're all will be put there. John 16 to 21. A lot of people stop at 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now the Andy Rooney thing. No, the rest of the story. Oh, with Andy Rooney. All right. All right. Thank you. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it. A lot of the world thinks of it that way. Oh, that oh, if I don't know that Jesus, then I'm going to hell. Is that right? It's not why he came. He came to save you, not to condemn you. He came to with a life rope, not an anchor. The world sometimes sees that as Jesus <coughs> giving us more chain than we can swim with. It's not what his goal was. His goal was to send you a life preserver made from his body and his blood. Change of attitude. He did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. And I would be completely remiss if I did not read the rest of the story. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. That's called condemnation, but it's also called justice. Our God is a just God. He said, believe in my Son. Or, the world doesn't want to believe in the or. Ah, I'm good. I don't, I don't believe that. Why would they 
they take scripture out? Have you noticed that? And a lot of, like today, they're not using all of the God is God inspired, canonized Bible. They take parts of it out. Now they have free will to say, I don't think we need to baptize. Therefore, we're going to all nations, preaching, teaching, and oh well, eep, that part. It's like a bleep, like in the movies, right? Yeah. Why do they bleep that? Yeah. I don't know. I'm getting off track. I'm too. We do have a plan. Do you have a closing prayer? Just kidding. <laughs> God loves you. Amen? Yes. Amen. <clears throat> his desire for you is to accept His Son. To accept His Son. Do you? And I'm not just speaking to anybody that hasn't accepted Him yet. I'm going to say this to everyone. That even those of you that have accepted him in the 20th century, even, follow his commands. Follow his commands. At every turn, at every hill, every rough patch, follow his commands. That's what he asks of us. I don't, I'm not, I don't describe the once saved, always saved. Why would we have the word apostasy? Why would we have the falling away? Believe within him. Daily repent. Always call in the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on up again. So I I want to ask you, and I've always, ever since I've been, you know, preaching, I've been giving messages for years, but like three years now I've been before you guys and I've always had a problem with this piece how to do this how to do an altar call you know I mean, you guys have noticed I did my service I kind of stumbled a little bit right how do we get to the next part of this how do I tell you emphatically enough that if you do not have Jesus Christ you are lost how do I convey to you that at this point of our service I'm giving you an opportunity to stand up and say yes I believe Yes, I want to be obedient. I choose life. I choose Jesus. But I always seem to stumble at this for some reason. It's like, I don't know, do I step on a toe here? Do I... Hmm. A person driving over a cliff. Do you reach out and go, hey, you may want to hit the brake now. That's the way I feel sometimes. I know there are people that are driving toward that cliff. And I want to, like... It's difficult. It's difficult. This is that time. The time in our service when we ask you to act on what's tugging at your heart right now. That is the Holy Spirit. The Word of God. He's calling. No, he's not trying to FaceTime you or anything like that. He's calling out to you. Confess you're a sinner. Repent from your sin, become <coughs> obedient to him, and then a life worth living his sacrifice. That's, ladies and gentlemen, where I'm going to end it. We're going to talk about that next week. Living that life worth his sacrifice. Whoever has seen Private Ryan, I know I don't like to use a lot of movie references, but I'm going to on this one. At the beginning of the movie, this old man's walking along, he finds the grave, and he, then he goes back and they see the bulk of the movie. And then at the very end, he stands up, and it's the guy that actually sacrificed his life so this kid could end up living, and he's an old man. He's got tears in his eyes, and he asks his wife, tell me I'm a good man. Because when that man died for him, he reached up and grabbed him and says, deserve this. Deserve this. That's what Jesus is asking. Deserve this. Deserve that empty cross. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. We're going to sing a hymn of decision right now. I usually pray this after, after that decision. But Father, I want to pray for it, the heart right now that's trying to make a decision. That's trying to get over the that home, the world. The, I just don't know. Father, encourage you. Tug at your heart. Tug a little harder. Father, whatever happens, we give it to you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.